been a long time since you felt peace in the valley you made where you're not meant to be where the shame throws shadows on you but don't you forget that you're headed to more but you said it for as good as it gets The same feet that left you Lost and alone Are the very same feet That'll bring you back home Wherever you are Whatever you did It's a page in your book But it isn't the end Your father will meet you With thoughts open wide This is where your home belongs Come around Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us on our live stream this morning. If you'll go ahead and worship with us.
Let's continue to worship this morning. Sing, I was buried. I was buried beneath my shame.
family, repeat after me. We'll sing a little louder. Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you are doing in this crazy time. Thank you for working in our lives individually, in our church, in our community, our nation, in our world. God, you are doing things that we will only see down the road, and so we thank you in advance. God, we're praying that you would help us to be the people of God that you want us to be in this time. And so we pray that you would push us but also guide us and comfort us and help us as we attempt to, to reach out to each other and to our world. Lord, as we think about reopening, give us your presence and help us to take care of every detail to protect our people. Jesus, we are remembering, Lord, on this Memorial Day weekend, the families who are grieving over brave men and women who fought for our freedom. We pray that you would give them comfort and help. We pray, God, for all of those who have lost loved ones recently through COVID-19. We think of the Blackstone family, Lord, who um, will be burying uh, the mom this coming Tuesday. We pray that you would help them. We thank, Lord, of the the Nazarenes and the Navajo Nation that are being so hard hit, we pray that you would be with them as well. God, on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those, Lord, that it are in our church family who have passed away this past year. And so we pray, God, that as we list these names, that, that people, wherever they're at, would join us praying a prayer of comfort and guidance. And so we pray for the Bernabo family. We pray for the Burnetts and the Glass family and the Garabedians. We pray for the Kuntz family and the Martino family and the Nichols family. And we pray for the Phillips family and the Sheltons and the Simmons and the Stryers and the Zarfus. Lord, each one of them and the extended family, touch them, we pray. And God, we pray for our leaders as they struggle with how to open up, how to protect people, what to do and what not to do. Lord, there is so much uh, information on all kinds of sides. We pray that you would just bring unity. We pray that our leaders would work together, Lord, for the good of our nation 
and that the world's leaders would work together. We pray for the scientific community as they work their heads off to try to get a vaccine. Would you be with them and help them? We pray for the medical professionals, Lord, on the front lines of treating people. We pray that you would be with them and protect them when watch over them. We pray for first responders. God, would you watch over them and help them? We pray for all of those people on the front lines, whether they're delivering our packages or packing our groceries, we pray that you would watch over them as well. Jesus, there are so many people to pray for. We ask that you would help each one of them. Jesus, we pray that in this sermon, that you would take the words of truth and apply them to all of our lives and build our faith, but especially to those who need them most, including me. I pray that you would help us to get this principle. And for all of this, we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to share with you a couple announcements before I preach today. And uh, as you know, we've been trying to advertise it. June 7th, we will reopen. And uh, we are trying to take every precaution. We're trying to follow all of our state and local recommendations and guidelines. Uh, this past week, I've been in two Zoom meetings with medical officials. So we are trying the very best we can. The chances are that you're going to like everything that happens is not very good. You'll wish for the old days and went before COVID-19, but this is the reality. So have a lot of grace and come if you feel comfortable. We are encouraging people who are at high risk to stay home. We are encouraging people who have been exposed, obviously, to stay home, those with fevers, those with sickness. If you're nervous about this, stay home and worship online because we're going to continue to offer online worship. And so, so it will be the 7th at 10 o'clock, social distancing, every other pew, uh, families uh, s sitting together, others, social distancing. Uh, we will provide masks. Bring your mask. We'll provide it. We'll have plenty of hand sanitizer. Every one of the restrictions and recommendations we're trying our best to wear and or to abide by. And so help us in all of that. The second is thank you for giving so faithfully. God is helping us. God's actually helping us to move forward in this time. And so I encourage you to go to northsidenaz.com, hit the giving button, and give your tithes and offerings there. There are several ways that you can do that. Or you can send them in. You, know, you can bring them by the church. Uh, you can call Shirley Yates, and she'll come by and, and get them for you. And so thank you. And continue to give. God is helping us. Well, let me change gears. And I want to talk to all of us primarily myself, about a principle that is very important in this time of uncertainty, this time of nervousness, and that is the Sabbath principle. Learning to rest in all of this craziness is an important lesson that we can all learn, and we must. Listen to Psalm 19. God's laws are perfect. They protect us. They make us wise and give us joy and light. God's laws are pure and eternal and just. They are more desirable than gold. We keep God's laws, and when we do, we find God's guidance, His blessing, and His protection. When we don't keep God's laws, we don't have the benefit of God's guidance, His protection, and and his blessing. And that's the opposite of what Satan will tell you. Satan will say to you, and he says to me, if you do it God's way, life will be boring. If you do it God's way, you won't be happy. There won't be the adventure. And that's the exact opposite of the truth. God's laws bring his blessing and his safety and his joy into our lives. And so do it God's way. The Ten Commandments are there to make our life easier, safer, and blessed. So let's look at the fourth commandment. 
Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Or another way of saying it, don't forget to honor the Sabbath day. Make it a special day for rest and honoring God. I want us to think of this as a principle that will benefit our lives if we will follow it. For some people listening today, coronavirus and the shutdown has been a blessing. You've been rested, you haven't, you haven't been stressed out, and I've heard of some of them, and I know some of them, that this has been a, a peaceful vacation-like time. But for others of us, it has been a non-stop, stress-filled, push forward, try to figure it out, and I put myself and many others in that that very place. It has just been crazy. And so I am preaching this sermon to myself and others just like me who find themselves working constantly trying to figure out how to lead in this crazy time. You know, if the malls were open and we went with a microphone and we begin to ask people, which of the Ten Commandments do you think is most important? The truth is, there'd be a lot of people who wouldn't know what the ten are. But if they did, most likely they would say that the most important commandment is thou shalt not kill. That's the one everybody remembers. They would say that most likely is the most important. There's a good chance that very few, if any, would even remember that there is a commandment to keep the Sabbath day holy and they certainly wouldn't make it the most important. In our world, we have forgotten the commandment and let the principle go to our spiritual, mental, and physical uh, detriment. It is a positive command. Think about that. There's only two in the Ten Commandments that are positive. Um, eight of them are thou shalt not or do not do this, but this one and honor your mother and your father are positive. And that says something about how good this is for us to abide by this principle. It also re begins with the word remember or, or don't forget to or let me remind you of something really, really important. And that's a very different feel and a different approach from thou shalt not. It's as different as when the kids were young and I would say to one of them, Trevor Austin Nichols, clean your room today or you're grounded. That's very different than, hey Trev, would you please pick up your clothes from the laundry room? See, the, the two are, are very, very different. This is like, Hey, remember to get gas or you're going to be walking. That, that's that kind of thing, which is very different than thou shalt not use the car. Very, very different. There's something else. The next word is Sabbath. If you do a word search on Sabbath, you will find that it is used all through the Bible. 270 times. It is everywhere. The root of the word means to rest, to stop or to cease, to do something different. So Sabbath literally is a rest. So Sabbath day is a rest day. The truth is that the Jews kept forgetting to honor the Sabbath. If you read the prophets, if you read especially Jeremiah in Jeremiah 17, he just is uh, very angry and really preaching hard about the fact that God's punishment was going to come partially because they were neglecting the Sabbath day. It is an important principle and the prophets pointed it out. They said God's punishment in the exile was at least partially due to forgetting to honor the Sabbath. What's interesting is you look back um, historically when the, they got into exile, and of course they, it was a horrible time and they were missing their home, but one of the things they did as a nation in exile, they remembered the Sabbath. 
it became one of the identifying marks of being a Jew. In fact, they moved in the exile from forgetting the Sabbath to making Sabbath an idol. It just moved from nothing of importance to everything of importance. So that by the time Jesus came, they had about 300 rules and regulations of what you could and couldn't do on the Sabbath. Jesus said when he came over and over again, you've missed the point. He said that the Sabbath isn't made for people. People are, or let me say it the other way. People are not made for the Sabbath as you've done. The Sabbath is made to help people. And then he said something that got him in a lot of trouble. And that is, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. And man, they hated him for that. And so the Sabbath principle had gone from neglect to idolatry. And you know what? Some of the time, in, in the past of many of us, there's been a little of harshness and a treating the Sabbath as a thou shalt not instead of a remember to. I grew up in that kind of environment. I grew up in a home and in a, a spiritual culture that we weren't allowed to do very many things. I wasn't allowed to play organized sports. Uh, we, we weren't allowed to go out to eat on Sunday. Uh, There's all kinds of restrictions and what kind of play we could do. Uh, we didn't get a paper on Sunday. We didn't get gas on Sunday. Uh, and I just remember the restrictiveness of it. And so many of us have grown up in a culture much like or at least partially like the Jews who made it a thou shalt not instead of a remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. See, the Sabbath had gone from remember to all the way to thou shalt not walk more than 1,000 yards on the Sabbath. And if you've hit 1,000 yards, you've got to stand right there and wait till sundown on Saturday night. It was crazy what they had made the Sabbath. So some of you are asking, well, what was the intent? The intent for the Sabbath was renewal, rest and renewal. The Sabbath is supposed to be a weekly renewal for our mind, our body, and our spirit. And the primary way in the Old Testament that they were to accomplish that was not to work. The commandment says, no one in your household is allowed to do any work. It, not the parents, not the kids, not the servants, not the animals. Work is forbidden you need to rest. I want us to look at the word day in this commandment because it is significant too. Just like in English, the word day is primarily um, used as a 24-hour calendar day in the Hebrew language. But it's also used, like English in the Hebrew, as the period of the day that it is light. So day can mean the 24 hours or it can mean the 12 hours. But in Hebrew, it, it is more extensive than that. They can use the word day to be a period of time. A, a celebration can be a day. A day of celebration could actually be several days. It could be a period of time. It is a, a, a principle where we move away from the grind of every day, work, 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 and rest and be restored and fellowship with God and with each other. Today, observant Jews honor the Sabbath from Friday night to Saturday night, just like they have for centuries. And there are some Christians who say we ought to um, honor the Sabbath, Saturday. And so they worship, go to church on Saturday, and there's, that's fine. It, it really doesn't matter, as we'll see in a minute. And there's other Christians who suggest that they are literalists, but what they do is they take all of the thou shalt nots from the Saturday, the Sabbath, and apply them to Sunday and 
call themselves literalists, which is fairly uh, interesting since they've changed the day that this was to happen. The truth is, if you have studied the New Testament, it doesn't matter if you worship on Sunday or Saturday or another day, as Paul explains in Romans chapter 14. The trouble with being a literalist is that you must be selective about what things you're going to be literal about. L let me explain. If you want to be a literalist about keeping the Sabbath day holy, then you're going to have to observe 59 Sabbaths every year because that's how many they had. See, they had some Sabbaths that weren't on Saturday. And in addition to that, if you're going to be a literalist, you, you are going to need to observe every seventh year as a whole year of Sabbath where, you, where the land needs to lay fallow and all debts are to be forgiven. Try to be a banker with that kind of system. It, it would be tough. That is to be a literalist. And one more. If you're going to be a literalist in keeping the Sabbath, you'll need to observe Exodus 35.3, which says... Do not light any fire in your homes on the Sabbath. Now, if you are living in the warm climate, like Texas most of the time, it's not that big of a deal. But if you happen to live in Alaska, in Canada, or Mongolia, you are not going to like being a literalist because you're going to freeze to death if you try to observe the Sabbath. So here's what happened. They had the Sabbath. It was Saturday. They were meticulous about it. Jesus came and he taught over and over again that I'm teaching a principle, not a rule. I, I want you to follow me. And if you follow me, you will, uh, you will adhere to everything required about the Sabbath. As soon as he rose from the dead on Sunday... His disciples immediately began to transition from worship on Saturday, the Sabbath, to honoring the Lord's Day, Resurrection Day, when Jesus rose from the dead. And so they immediately began to transfer their, their commitment as a worshiping group to Sunday. Now, being Jews, they continued to go to the synagogue on Saturday, traditionally, um, but they worshiped on Sunday. And of course, Sunday then was a day of work. Um, and so they would gather together before they went to work and they would sing some songs and they would pray and read scripture. And then after work, they would gather together for communion. Somewhere around 100 AD, the emperor discontinued all Sunday night meetings. They were banned. And so they had to move communion from the evening to the morning. What's interesting is that as the Gentiles began coming to Christ and coming into the church, they were not observing Saturday at all. They were just observing the Lord's Day. And that made some of the literalists, the, the legalists, very, very angry. And if you read in the book of Acts, uh, the, the big chapter is chapter 15, where they had a big council and trying to... to uh, compromise, trying to deal with the conflict that arisen. Paul talks about some of it a lot in the book of Galatians. Um, man, it was a big deal. The literalists were saying, you've got to do this. They were treating the Sabbath as a thou shalt not. And, and the rest were saying, this really isn't that. This is a remember, and it's been transitioned to Sunday. Well, they, in Acts chapter 15, had a big ruling, and they didn't say anything about the Sabbath. They said, you, you can do what you want about the Sabbath. Paul sums it up in chapter 14, verse 5. One person thinks that some days should be set aside as holy, and another thinks that each day is pretty much like any other. There are good reasons either way, so each person is free to follow the convictions of conscience. Adhere to the principle, it isn't as important if it's Sunday or Saturday or another day. And so in the New Testament, we get the principle of the Sabbath. The book of Hebrews just talks about a Sabbath rest for God's people over and over and over again. In fact, it just encourages us that that God's intention for every one of us is for us to be renewed weekly 
and daily and moment by moment through this principle of God giving us rest. It's not God's intention for us to be stressed out. It isn't God's intention for us to have our schedules bursting at the seams so that we're running here and there and everywhere. That's not how God wants us to live. He expects us. He wants us. He invites us to take part in the principle of rest. He wants us to live peacefully with shalom, with, with a sense of well-being, not pushed here and there by our schedules. And so the principle, Hebrews 4, 9, a Sabbath rest for the people of God. What a what a great principle, what a great reality that even in this crazy time, we need to experience it. See, we jam our weekends full, so many people do, who have weekends off, so that we're violating the principle. There's no time to, to renew. And the truth is, the church has often violated the very principle, the commandment of honoring the Sabbath day by just packing one activity after another into the Sunday. And that is a violation of the Sabbath principle as surely as those who just disregard the thing altogether. I remember having grown up in a very strict Sabbath-keeping kind of environment. And I remember getting into ministry and immediately being, being uh, just... Uh, it, it just overwhelmed at times with just the busyness of Sunday. We've got to have Sunday school and we've got, you know, we've got to have music practice and we've got to preach and we've got to have that and then we've got to do these things sometimes and getting with people and then Sunday night we've got to come back. And, and I remember as a young preacher thinking, we're violating the principle of the Sabbath. And we were. And one of the things I'm thankful about in this uh, horrible lockdown time, this coronavirus uncertainty, is it has forced us to give up the incessant busyness. And it's forced us to stop all these activities at church. And I'm thankful, thankful for that. I want to encourage us, let's never move from remember the Sabbath principle and make it a day that is holy and recharging and restorative and move it to thou shalt not, harsh, legalistically of other people. We need to have grace because people restore differently. The truth is, all day long, uh, all day throughout the week, I am sitting at a computer, I'm sitting in meetings, I am sitting with people, I'm, you know, I'm just sitting all the time. So please don't insist that on Sunday or my day of rest I sit. I'm tired of sitting. I want to do something. I, I know it sounds crazy, but my Sabbath is on a bicycle by the lake. Um, find where you are restored and, and do that. Let's show grace to one another. Let me ask you, are you keeping the principle of the Sabbath? Are you being renewed? Or are you feeling just pushed, pushed, pushed? There's got to be some boundaries. There's got to be some saying no so that you can say yes to the principle of the Sabbath. As I was reading in preparation, I came across, and I didn't write it down, I apologize for that, a, a Catholic priest and a Catholic article that was really helpful. And he talked about these different practical ways of honoring this principle. He has them all start with a W. Withdraw is the first one. Withdraw from work. Withdraw from the stresses of making money and, and moving forward. Withdraw from the worry and the anxiety. Withdraw from the people that are putting you on that treadmill. Withdraw. There's got to be a way to step back from the rat race. Withdraw. It might be good to turn off the TV. Get off of social media. Go for a long walk. Ride a bike. Sit by the lake. Do something withdrawing from the rat race that will help 
begin to restore and give you time to clear your head. Worship. Private and corporate are essential. Private worship. Man, you need to withdraw from the rat race and spend time with our Heavenly Father, reading the Word of God and talking to Him and just sitting and enjoying His presence and, and allowing His Spirit to renew you. That's in private, but also in corporate worship. It is so essential. Obviously, those of us who lead worship, who do a ministry, have got to find another time because that's not very restorative um, on Sunday if that's when you are having worship. So withdrawal in worship, and here's another one, wonder. As you withdraw, as you worship, you create space in your mind and your heart and your spirit to just begin to wonder about the eternal things, the essential things, the big questions in life that just get pushed to the side in the rat race. We begin to discover what is it that God wants for our lives? How does He want to use our gifts in ministry? How does He want to work in this situation in our family? Begin to wonder, begin to consider what God is up to in your life and in our world. With Draw, worship, wonder, and walk. Once again, it's good for you. Take a walk if you can. In the midst of worship, in the midst of withdrawing, in the midst of wondering, you will be amazed at the problems you can solve on a walk, on a trail. If you're in that setting of withdrawing and worshiping and allowing your mind to wonder about things. Invite your family to do it with you. Make it a family thing or kayak or bike. Something that helps get you moving in the midst of the wonder. And then there's one more. And I like this. Because in our lives we must feed our spirit but we also must engage other people and so this last W is welcome. Welcome others into this Sabbath rest. Welcome them. And there's different ways you can do it. And don't make it the primary thing. The only thing you do, make sure you're attending to your own spirit and your own renewal, but welcome someone else into that. Get a cup of coffee with them. Sit and worship or fellowship with them a bit. Once again, let me ask you, are you keeping the principle not the thou shalt not. That's not what this is about. It is the principle. Remember the principle because it's good for you. It will restore you and renew you day by day, even in this tough time. Would you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, many of us are guilty of forgetting the Sabbath principle. And lately, I have been guilty and I pray that you would help me to do better. I pray for those who just have jam-packed everything into their weekends and they're just, their schedules are full and, and they're feeling the effects of, of not being rested, of not being renewed, of, of not experiencing your peace in their hearts and their lives. God, help them right now to make a commitment to remember the principle of the Sabbath. And begin setting boundaries and make commitments to implement that in their lives, I pray. Jesus, you will provide joy and peace and rest, regardless of what our schedules look like in a month or two months. Regardless of what happens in our world, there can be rest and peace. And so make that a reality for every one of us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for listening. I want to remind you that uh, hang on because the band is going to help us with one of my favorite songs. Thank you. Stronger, the King of Glory, the King above all.
you've done for me. you've done for me.